over 500 youths trained in information and communication technology youth empowerment program, that's the ICT, yep, have received their starter packs from the state government. The Commissioner for Youth Development did a formal presentation to the beneficiaries on behalf of his boss, that's the state governor, Dr. Ifani Okoa, at the government house Asaba, urging them to make good use of the opportunity to launch themselves into the wonderful world of technology. Now, joining us from Asaba, the Delta State Capital, is the Commissioner for Information, Mr. Charles Anyago. A pleasure having you with us on the program. Thanks for having me. Good afternoon. How why is Delta State, the Delta State government, looking at ICT in creating more jobs? Well, it's not only in the area of ICT that we are trying to intervene with a view to ensuring that our youths are meaningfully engaged. You recall that even right from 2015, the governor made it clear that the empowerment of the youths is one very uh, key element or aspect of his administration. Because we believe that once these uh, minds, very creative minds are engaged, we'd have ended up reducing the incidences of uh, insecurity and other vices that may attract uh, these uh, youths who have a lot of energies that they want to dissipate. But in the area of ICT, we believe that uh, the world is moving and the, through ICT, you can engage these creative minds to venture into a whole lot of enterprise. And that is why through the Ministry of Science and Tech, we've been able to uh, train and equip these youths so that they too can become innovators in their own right. You recall that before now, government will want to uh, just open up the system and say they are creating employment and by bringing people into government, even when vacancies don't exist. But in our own case, we believe that the best we could do is to ensure that they become entrepreneurs in their own right, so that along the line, they also become job creators. And that way, they begin to add much more value to the system rather than just uh, earning salaries, even when they are not... Um, uh, creating value. So today we can beat our chest to say that uh, much has been achieved in that direction. And so we're very happy with our youth who have also made themselves available to be trained and to be equipped by the state government. What about creating the right environment to ensure ICT thrives besides training? What about infrastructure? We have done a lot. The first thing we have even done is to ensure that we have a very peaceful environment under which um, businesses could thrive. You do know that in the past seven, as, uh, and, uh, almost about uh, seven years now, six and a half years, we've been able to create the right atmosphere in Delta such that our state has been in the news, rightly for the good reasons for quite some time now. What we did in that regard is to uh, uh, galvanize all existing energies, both from the youth, from the women group, collaborating with our traditional institution and persons in our different communities to cooperate with the programs and policies of government such that at the end of the day, we're able to strike the right call and get everybody to be on board. Now, you are talking about creating that right environment. What is the right environment? First, we have been able to train the youths, not just to go to the market and acquire these tools and then provide them even when they don't have the requisite skills that is needed to deploy them. So we first subject them to training, but not only on how to use these skills, we also train them on how to understand how to run a business. We continue to monitor them even while they go through training. And even after equipping them, the governor has gone ahead to set up um, a, a department that is into mentoring and monitoring. So we monitor how they are progressing. And at the same time, use our microcredit office to link them up with the financial institutions for those who want to expand beyond what we may have trained them into. And for instance, if those who are trained in repairs of certain um, gadgets, some of them go beyond the hardware to also learn more of uh, developing a software. And when that is done, we provide them with uh, those who have the requisite knowledge to continue to mentor them such that they go beyond the training and the startup pack. Of course, startup pack is for them to start off. But after they have started that, that business, we need to ensure that they sustain the businesses because the survival of that business is very, very critical to what we are doing. It's not enough to just play politics and say you have equipped them. But once the businesses survive, they would have ended up also contributing to our GDP and by extension reduce their poverty in our state, even as they also continue to assist us in bringing out the level of crime and criminalities. Now, and so it's a win-win about... situation for both the state and the people that are their training. So the right environment do exist in our state. And um, research, you may want to talk about issue of funding research. That is uh, something that you have to also do in collaboration with um, existing institutions. It's not just a one-day thing, it's a continuous process, and we are convinced that as they make progress, both them and the states will continue to find more common grounds on how to improve on the training they have acquired to make the environment much more 
conducive for them to continue to thrive. Now, Mr. Enyago, there's something I want to take you up on. You mentioned reduction in the rate of poverty and in the rate of crime. Are there any statistics or data to back this up that during this period that the, the government, the Delta State government has created more jobs, that these indices have reduced? Yes, there are. So even just about um, uh, two years ago, the National Bureau of Statistics uh, rated Delta State as the second in terms of um, uh, the, 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 the capital that is in the hands of persons in terms of standard of living after uh, Lagos, in terms of what the statistics was able to prove, that now we have been able to reduce poverty largely after Lagos, and that the amount of funds in the hands of persons in, in case of data uh, is such that it has jumped from what it was in 2015 and what it became, what it came to in 2019. And so that meant that our effort at ensuring that our people are um, brought into the mainstream of uh, surviving in terms of the economy is working out. Then on the issue of uh, security, because we now have more hands engaged, and then we even have those who are not engaged, becoming hopeful and looking forward to the a very transparent process through which those they are close to have been able to get involved in government businesses. They become so hopeful that they no longer begin to think of crime because hopelessness is one aspect that has the way of promoting them crime and criminalities. And when you have a state where people now have nightlife, if you come to Asaba, we call it now a city that you can do business 247, the center of investment. And when you come to a number of other urban areas in Delta, you will see that the businesses are thriving. Some private sector operators are coming in in droves, establishing businesses in Delta. We are not yet where we want to be, but we have left the shore and we are sailing very, very comfortably. And we are quite confident that we'll continue along this trajectory that would have been able to uh, elevate, uh, somehow to a very large extent elevate the standard of living of our people. And that by the 2023, when we'll be leaving office, we could beat our chest that we're living quite strong and leaving a state behind that will indeed launch and launch effectively into what is expected of uh, modern states in the 21st century. And as Mr. it Charles. is... Okay, if yes, you I can hear you. If you can just quickly wrap up because we need to close the show. So we are confident by the grace of God, uh, knowing the level of um, development and um, uh, some form of sensitization that our people in 2023 will also begin uh, to think of how to choose somebody who will sustain what we may have, where we may have left it. Because well, there's no way we are going to conclude everything that we desire that we uh, do as a state. Thank but you, we are quite confident that as a state along this line that will make progress. Thank you so much, Mr. Charles Anyago, for sharing your thoughts with us. That's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akinwami.